Boys in primary schools are now eligible to receive the free HPV vaccine, but is it available for boys in the country yet? Now, the HPV vaccine prevents cervical cancer in women, and uh, we do know that the Ministry of Health has said that the vaccine is currently only given to girls in the country aged 9 to 14 years. For more on this, I'm joined by Dr. Andrew Mulwa, Director, Medical Services, Preventive and Promotive Health at the Ministry of health. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Terry. Thank you very much. We associate the HPV vaccine with girls, or at least in the country, that's what we've seen. Um, we've seen it being administered to girls. Can it be given to boys? And why should boys be given this vaccine? Yes, the vaccine can theoretically be given to boys. Uh, this vaccine uh, works against the human papilloma virus, which is uh, one of the most common sexually trans transmitted viral diseases that uh, if the vaccine is uh, conferred to boys, will actually offer, th offer them protection against the virus. Uh, this vaccine, of course, uh, in the current administration uh, is being administered to girls between the ages of 10 and 15 uh, to prevent uh, cervical cancer. Of course, we know cervical cancer is one of the leading uh, uh, causes of mortality amongst uh, women, uh, cl causing close to 3,300 deaths a year and infecting about 5,600 women every year. So as a way of preventing this uh, disease, uh, we introduced a uh, uh, HPV vaccination in 2019 to protect girls uh, against getting this disease in future. Mm -hmm. uh, this, of course, vaccine is administered to that age because uh, this is the age that is considered optimum for development of antibodies uh, for young girls, as well as uh, is an age that is before uh, sexual debut because, like I already mentioned, this uh, virus is sexually transmitted and therefore if administered after a sexual debut, most likely the girl will have been exposed to HPV and therefore uh, it may not be helpful. Right. So for boys, mm -hmm. yes, it is uh, uh, possible that you give, because once you give uh, boys, you confer them. Currently, our focus is constrained by one, availability of resources to roll out uh, to both boys and girls. And because boys do not have cervix, mm -hmm. and therefore even when you give them, uh, the vaccine, it uh, confers them protection against the, vaccine, the, the, the virus, mm -hmm. but not against the, vi the, 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 the cancer because the, can the cervix is for women and yes. therefore being so a reproductive... In, in terms of the boys and the attention towards them now, this would be essentially to protect the girls? It, is, it would be to protect the girls. Mm -hmm. And therefore, as of now, our focus is to continue with the uh, girls' vaccination, which we have done very well of the targeted 4.2 uh, million girls. Mm -hmm. We have been able to reach 70% of them, which is close to 3 million girls. And we hope by the end of this year we will be able to reach uh, close to 90 90%. And therefore, at that time, in terms of programming, uh, the ministry might prioritize uh, giving this because the cohort that will require the vaccine will substantially reduce. Because remember, we are targeting 10 to 14 years, and the 10 to 14, uh, the 10, uh, the new entrance, which is the 10 years every year, because the, the population grows every year, right. will, will, will be probably uh, like a quarter of what we are doing now. Mm -hmm. And therefore, that the vaccines that are available, we may start considering uh, having boys uh, get into it. Right. And Dr. Terry, before we get into the girls and their uptake, the ages of the boys that would be eligible for this? I think for purposes, of course, this is a decision that uh, we'll have to go through uh, a consultative process, policy making process involving the uh, immunization uh, advisory group, uh, professionals, what, which, what we call the Kenitag, and guide us on the age. But uh, from a scientific perspective, would be boys before sexual debut. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to look at social behavioral patterns of boys. And uh, we think uh, boys have not done sexual debut at the same age that the girls do. And mm -hmm. therefore, uh, I think the ages of 10 to 15 would be a good age. But that is a decision that, of course, uh, is a policy decision that would be guided by the policy process. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of um, the uptake currently, um, you've been um, running campaigns and vaccinating the girls. What do we know about the numbers and the uptake and indeed the resistance and in what particular areas? Uh, I, I think uh, after introduction of the vaccines, the year 2019 to 2020, before the COVID-19 pandemic, we did very well. 
and uh, after COVID-19, uh, we, we had gone up to uh, 30% in the first year, but uh, with the advent of COVID-19, there was a significant drop in the number of vaccinations. Of course, this is attributed to closure of schools because most of these young girls that we get them for vaccination mm -hmm. are usually through the school health program and therefore vaccinations or outreaches happen uh, in education uh, system. So with closure of schools, we are unable to get these girls. We have been able to undertake a periodic intensification of the vaccination, uh, which has made us leap from from 38% uh, at the uh, end of uh, COVID-19 uh, closures, which is, was 2021, to now 71%. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think at the beginning of this year, we were doing uh, 52%, we moved to 58%, and now, uh, as of this uh, month, we are at now 71%. So therefore, we are, we are moving steadily fast uh, towards attainment. We have done very well. Uh, in, especially in areas where the collaboration between the county leadership, because health is a devout function, and therefore this ex, uh, vaccination uh, exercise is undertaken in the counties, where the counties have taken lead in terms of advocacy and health promotion. Uh, surprisingly, in hard to reach uh, counties, uh, this has been, uh, there are counties that have done very well, mm -hmm. but uh, surprisingly, Nairobi County, which we expect to be one of the leading counties, is not doing as, as well. Uh, of what course, would you attribute this to? I, I think most of it is because of uh, the advocacy and the school system uh, here in Nairobi, alike in the in the in the in the in, in, in the rural areas or in the. Uh, less urban areas where the, the schools uh, are boarding and you are able to access and the, the, we have a vi vibrant school health program. Mm -hmm. Information in Nairobi is assumed to be av available right. readily through TV. So through there's radio. not enough advocacy. Yes, the advocacy has not been quite, and uh, but we are working very closely with the county government of Nairobi to step up uh, the campaign uh, because, uh, as you are aware, Nairobi has close to 10% of the country's right. population. Now, um, in terms of the age limit um, for women that are already sexually active, Active, perhaps that would be interested in taking the HPV vaccine uh, what would be the age limit and you know as regards you know the older population um, a demographic that is already sexually active and administering the vaccine the conflict that lies therein uh, I, I think uh, for programming perspective we are targeted girls that we think uh, are not sexually active for those that are sexually active Chances are there has been exposure to this vaccine. So therefore, unless one goes to their doctor, they do a PCR and confirm that they indeed have not been exposed to this virus, then in older women who are sexually active, it may not be of value because uh, chances are, because these are, H, 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 a human papilloma virus is a pretty common virus and therefore is a, is a virus that most likely has been transmitted to uh, most women who are sexually active. Right, and we will be looking forward to the next rollout um, of the um, HPV vaccine across schools in the country. Dr. Uh, Andrew Mulwa, Director of Medical Services at the Ministry of Health, we thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, Liliana.